Welcome, Amanda here with Crafting with Amanda, and I am a Close to My Heart maker. If you aren't a member or haven't subscribed to my channel, you can go ahead and do that so you don't miss any videos. Today I am doing a double layout from the Holly and Ivy Paper Collection Workshop on the Go Kit. I'm not doing the kit layout as Close to My Heart designed it. I'm kind of making it my own and working with my photos, but this kit just has so many great elements to it that I, I really like purchasing the kits to do layouts versus um, just the papers. So like the stickers, they have Tis the Season, Joy to the World, Peace on Earth, all the different words and the deer. And then these pages here are die cuts that come in the Workshop on the Go kit and they tell you which project it goes to and, and as you saw in the beginning there's a instruction sheet with how to do all the cuts. Close to My Heart actually does live Facebook um, workshops and they walk you through the cuts and all the assembly. So if you just want to buy the kit and assemble it as it is, Close to My Heart corporate offices go ahead and walk you through all that. So this is a piece of French vanilla cardstock which has that creamy tone to it and then you saw the white daisy. And now I'm just showing you some of the papers or actually all of the papers that come in the Holly and Ivy paper pack that is included with the um, Holly and Ivy Workshop on the Go kit. The colors in this, it, they have the traditional green and red, but they're soft as well. Now I'm taking my layout inspiration from the Make It From Your Heart book volume three. And these are photos that I have discovered in our unpacking and moving in that. And so I'm just following the sketch, like I said, from Make It From Your Heart and I'm cutting the papers as they recommend and here I'm just looking through to find which papers I want to go and coordinate and and I kind of do some dry fitting just to see how they'll play together and how they work with the photos um, and so you'll see me I will actually kind of walk you through most of my thought process as I put these pages together so I'm laying out the photos and I did trim them down they were all four by sixes um, and there was a lot of background in you know background I don't know images or side views in the camera of you know rooms that we didn't need you know the focus should be on the people unless you need to you know you're telling the story about a Christmas tree or a chair or something but for these I'm telling the story about the people in the photos and you'll see that I and I titled this page uh, Christmas at the farm because these are photos from multiple years of us celebrating Christmas at my um, husband's family farm. The kids in these photos are not my own, but they are my nieces and nephews. And the, just to give you an idea of the time that has passed, I think the youngest that's in the photo is 20... Eight or 29 <laughs> so just to give you an idea of these are old photos so here I want to show you how to make a pocket behind a photo or really any element but so that when you pull a, um, a tag out or a journal out or something that it doesn't get stuck or it doesn't accidentally um, rub on the photo or the paper that it's underneath so all that you need to do it's super simple is take the image in this case the tag that you want to tuck behind something and I use it as a template to how where to place the foam tape around that tag so now as you pull that tag in and out it's gonna come just smooth so these are more of the die cuts that came with the workshop on the go and they're just circles and I thought maybe I would use those on the background of this craft paper but um, they didn't work for me. I wasn't feeling it. The colors that are in the Holly and Ivy paper pack are Candy Apple Evergreen, Harbor, Mink, Mint, Mocha, Sage, Toffee, and White Daisy. I am out of toffee cardstock right now, so I decided to add craft paper to it, and I, I really like how this turned out. So now I am using some of the Dyna Wakely uh, Gloss Spray, and this is the night color. So it's a really dark blue. And I just, I, w I knew that my papers were gonna be along the outside edges on the right page and then kind of mixed on the left page. I felt that I needed to bring some red in. So I just grabbed my Candy Apple 
ink pad and then this is an old stamp from a stamp set that has retired a long time ago it's called beautiful friendship and i don't think that i had even ever used the medallion that was on this stamp set i think i had only used the sentiments that were on it so it's kind of nice to go back into our stash and pull things and use them and and just bring them you know kind of make them fresh and up to date now so I put the papers back on the base pages just so I have an idea of what's going to be covered and what isn't. The very first medallion that I stamped is mostly going to be covered by papers. So by having the other papers on there, you kind of get to see. And if you missed it, I did flip my Versa mat over because that has a foam to it. And as you're stamping you, with acrylic stamps, you need to kind of have that foam just to, to give it a little give when you stamp. And also, you don't pull your stamp up off of the paper right away especially with craft paper or something that's a little more fibrous go ahead and and let it set on the paper you know just for a second so it can absorb right into it so here we go we're starting to see the layout come together i'm going to put the photos on the mats i'm showing um how you can tuck that tag in right behind and now i have all these extra photos of our one niece um again through the years and so what I'm going to do is do kind of an accordion flap instead of a flip flap which I've been doing a lot lately of I'm actually going to do like a little book or an accordion flap so I cut a piece of paper that's 12 by four and a half inches tall and I'm going to add my photos onto this and my photos I had cut down to four by four and I'm going to go ahead and trim them and they're still going to be four inches tall but I'm going to make them three and three quarters wide just so that there's a little bit more of a border around them and that they're not interfering with the folds and just it, it kind of works well and I love how it just happens serendipitously that this one photo of her in front of the refrigerator is narrow enough that you get to see the deer peeking out from beside her so I decided to put another tag on the inside and I haven't done my journaling just because I need to go back and look up the years of each of these um, Christmases so that I can include that. So here I just grabbed one of my circle punches. Those were a gift from my mom, I think 15 years ago. And I like to use it just as a, a little tab on anything that has like a page or something that you need to pull. It just, it's a visual clue of, hey, there's something going on here. So that's what I did there is just cut a circle and, and folded it in half and glued it together. If you haven't watched any of my previous videos, I like to show when doing words, if you don't weld them together to keep them the same spacing and that they, you know, stay in line, I just use a piece of washi tape to take it off of the Cricut mat. And then I went ahead and pop dotted both the word Christmas that came from the workshop and the word farm. I, I pop dotted both of those up. So on the layout there, um, they kind of just have more presence. And here I'm just going through all the different stickers, all the different die cuts that came in the workshop and picking ones that work. I was looking at the page of if I have a kind of cluster of um, embellishments and, and leaves in that over on the left hand side, how do I want to move your eye across the page to get to the right hand side? So I think um, you'll see me stop for a moment and look at the page. In the meantime, these came just as white with um, harbor or kind of a black background and they were too stark for me. So I wanted to add the red berries and then after I colored the red berries, I realized I needed to color the white stems in too. So I do that on all of the little berries that came in the kit. I don't show you coloring all of them in, just the one. But I use the shimmer brush, so it just gives it a nice little sparkle effect, which is nice. It's just something subtle, but um, it adds interest. I needed to find something that kind of hid where all of those stems joined together because they were just, they just look kind of in a muddle. So I grabbed the Tis the Season, I believe, circle sticker off the sticker sheet from the paper pack. And here I wound some silver thread and I put a glue dot to hold my two ends and then just using my piercing tool I pull that off of the backing sheet from the glue dot and I'm able to then move that with my piercing tool however I want. So this is where I'm kind of looking at all right I have a cluster on the left hand page I have a cluster on kind of the bottom right hand page of that photo mat square so I need something to bring you 
through the page. So I went ahead and did it at the bottom and I'm bridging the gap between the two pages. And visually what that kind of does is it takes you from the cluster on the left, kind of through the photos, through the title, down to the cluster in between the two pages, and then you're heading back up again um, on the right hand page. I hope that makes sense. So I made another loop of the silver thread because again, you need to have some balances. Your eyes like comfort of um, threes. So I will have a loop of thread here. I do end up adding that same silver thread also on the tag. So that kind of gives you that third element of the silver thread. And if you saw, I added another circle element to kind of hide the stems on my cluster there in the bottom right. And I think that one is a sticker that says joy to the world. And now I'm pulling my tags and they're just, they're plain. I know I haven't done my journaling yet, but I wanted to give them some interest. I thought about doing some shimmer brush or some splattering on them, but instead I saw the hearts on the uh, sticker sheet and decided just to use that. So here I'm doing my thread. I kind of um, folded it over like eight times and pulled it through itself. And I'm just adding some glue on the back of those threads. And then I actually have it on my nonstick mat and I have a, a acrylic block on top of it to kind of hold it down while it dries. And I did that with both of the tags, the one that was on the inside flap here next to our niece, that one. And then I also did it on the one that I tucked behind my sister-in-law. So, and I just did two quick um, adhesive runner of the that tag that's on the inside of the accordion flap because you can twist that off later and I can do my journaling then. So one more of the thread spirals there to, to kind of finish out this page. And I'm really pleased with how this turned out. So here's a close up. You can kind of see some of the details of the splatter and that um, medallion from the stamp set. You can see the berries. You don't really get the shimmer that's in real life, but you can see how these um, the title is popped off the page. I did add the word gather from the sticker sheet also in that cluster that's kind of in between the two pages. And here's our right page. We're gonna take a look at that, kind of cycle through everything so you get some details. I will have um, the photos on my blog, so if you wanna kind of be able to pause and really look in depth at things, you can do that. I try to post scrapbook layouts on Tuesdays and then I do some sort of fun fold on Fridays. If you haven't already subscribed to my page, be sure to do that so you don't miss any videos. Here's another video that you may be interested in. If you want to shop for any of these products, I'm craftingwithamanda.com. Have a blessed day.